Welcome along to another video presentation from Saturn Alliance. Help us continue to make material like this available. If you find this video beneficial, we would ask you to make a donation towards helping us improve what we currently provide. All donations, no matter how small, will ensure the continuation and improvement of our offerings. To make a donation, please go to donation.satinalliance.com.au Today we'll be looking at a technology called Shadow Protect from a company called Storagecraft. This product allows us to take continuous image backups of our small business server saved off to a location. We're able to restore individual files from these backups as well as complete a full disaster recovery if required. The first step is to install the Shadow Protect product on our server and this will require a reboot. Once that's complete, launch the Shadow Protect console. Before you create a backup, it's always a recommended practice that you go in and specify the destination into which you'll be storing your backups. This could be a location on the network or something like an external hard disk. As you can see, you have the option for a network share, but in our case, we have the external USB hard disk that we'll be backing up to. So once we've selected the destination type, we then go in and give it a name so that we can identify that in case we have multiple locations. And then we then specify its physical location. In our case, because it's a USB drive, it simply comes up as drive G into which I've created a directory called backup. So I simply select this and this now defines a destination path. Now I can specify a number of different destination paths on my network if I want, so I can back up to different locations. Once I've specified the destination, simply return to the wizard tab and select backup. This will now commence the wizard to allow us to define a backup job. The first step in defining a backup job is what we want to back up, so in our case we have three volumes on our small business server, a C, which is the Windows volume, a D, which is the programs, and an E, which is the data. So in my case, I want to back up all three, so I select them and hit Next. The next step is to define a destination. In this case, I only have a single destination, and it's already selected that by default. But if I want, I can pull down from the list and select others, or I can browse to another location. It automatically gives each volume a name which I can if I wanted to simply click in here and rename. Once I'm happy with that I simply click the next button. Now I can schedule my backup. Over here I've got how I can schedule it. I can do it now, I can do it at a defined time, weekly or monthly. So in this case I'm going to select weekly. So once a week on a Sunday at 6 p.m. I'm going to do a full image backup of all my drives. During Monday through Friday, between 8 a.m. and 6 p.m., every 60 minutes, I'm going to create an incremental backup based on the original full backup image. This means that these incrementals will be very small, provided there aren't major changes on the hard disk. This means that these incremental backups throughout the working week were very small and very quick and not cause any disruption to the users. If I want to increase the number of backups per day that I'm doing, I simply decrease the amount of time between the backups. But in this case, I'm happy for a backup to run every 60 minutes, giving me a total, as you can see, of 11 backups a day. I select Next. Now I can go in here and I can enter a password, so this means that the data backup file, my images, are protected by a password. This is very important because there may be a situation where a user might inadvertently try and mount an image, or perhaps if the external hard disk is stolen you don't want insecure parties accessing your information. I can select advanced and choose more options. Again, I can include free space, which it doesn't by default. I can enable write caching. 
Normally I've got things like self-healing turned on. I can run pre-snapshot commands and post-snapshot commands. This can be very handy if you need to shut down third-party databases. Standard products like Exchange and SQL are handled by the standard Microsoft Volume Shadow Copy. I can change my encryption and I can also set my retention policy. So normally you would set this and say that what I want to do is I want to retain a certain number of full backups. So if I want to retain a total of four backups, basically over four weeks, I can choose to do this provided that I've got the space on my destination location. Once the fourth backup is complete, um, the old backups will be deleted and any incrementals in between will also be removed. So it's a form of pruning to ensure that the data growth doesn't continue unrestricted. Once I've set these options, I simply go next, check that I have all my options set, and if you want to run the job, you simply click the Execute Now button, and then run Finish. Obviously, the first backup that I'm going to run will back up all the data, so be aware that the first backup that you run will be a complete image of all your files to the external location that you've denoted. As you can see, we're now in the Backups Job tab, and we have a scheduled backup here, and its task is set as running. If we scroll down the window at the bottom here, we can get to see the progress of the job. So as you see, the job involves backing up a C, a D, and a D. And we can monitor the progress from here. As you can see, once the backup commences, the progress is displayed in a summary form here. To get more detail, simply click on the option here that says View Detail, and the window will be expanded and show you some low-level information about the progress of the job. Again, we can scroll down the window to get all the low-level detail of exactly what's going on. Scroll a bit further down, you'll get the progress, throughput and also the opportunity to cancel or close the job if you wish. Now that the job is complete we can view the history. We can click on the backup history tab to get further detailed information of the success or whatnot of our backup job simply by clicking on it, getting all the detail which we saw in the view detail option. And if we select our destination location now, we'll see that we have three complete images, one of each volume. We'll now wait for the backup to reach its next timing stage when it will now complete an incremental backup based on our original images. After the completion of the next incremental, if we now look at the backup location, we'll see our base images as they were before, but now we will see incrementals for each volume. As you can see the size of these is significantly smaller than the original volume and these incrementals will continue on based on the schedule that you created when you established the job. Thank you very much for watching this presentation from Satnalites.